All right, now let's say that you're on a repo locally that has a remote out on GitHub. Ooh, yeah, these are just issues. Okay, and so we'll look for one that has, what can we see here? Okay, setup files, that works for me. Oh yeah, you could also open it in Vim if you wanted to, but I have it set with the web flag. Let's take a look at what that looks like. All I'm doing is setting up a local called item and calling the GitHub CLI with issue list, piping that into FCF, and then using oct to get the number off, which is awesome. I'm calling gh issue view, passing in that item and using the web flag. Now you don't have to use the web flag. You could also open it locally in Vim. You can see I do also have a function where I open in Vim right here. So you could also do this too. And I have it set to read only, set to markdown. Looks really nice. I've shown that in another video. So you could also do that, but Opening up in the web like that's really convenient. So there you go. There's always something more you can do with FZF. And as you know, the sky's the limit with FZF. You can take any list and fuzzy find stuff in it, and it's awesome. So let's say that you're a Rust developer and you want to use a Rust binary locally for whatever reason. You can go ahead and search for, say, grep, and you'll see there's some nice packages there but you'd like to see these in a nice list and install if you find the one you like so we'll try rc grep and i'll show you what rc is it's just a zish alias and i can see there is rip grep and that is fantastic that's what i want and as you can see I already have it installed, but if I didn't, it would go through and it would install rip grip and it would go through and build all the dependencies and put it on your path. You'd be good to go. So first thing to note here is just that using cargo to get binaries out of crates.io is pretty cool, you know, and so if you know things are, uh, happen to be rust binaries instead of using brew or something else you can use cargo and use them like this it's really nice so let's take a look at rc here so you can see that i just have a local variable called crate i'm setting the value of crate to whatever comes back when i do a cargo search and you know that dollar sign one is that variable I sent in which was grep and then it gets passed to FZF and then our good friend Ock is pulling out the name of the crate that I want and then I'm calling cargo install and crate and it gets loaded up really nice and this is all you really have to do. And you can turn anything into an FCF list and using a little awk here and there and hooking it up, just you're good to go. It's awesome. All right. Now, let's say that you have a word that you can't quite think of. And maybe it's one of those times when you type it in wrong a bunch of times hoping that you'll get the squiggly lines and that you can go ahead and try to use the inline spell check but it's just not recognizing what you're typing in because you've got some letters backwards or maybe you're really good at spelling but you can't think of a word but you know part of a word and so we'll take for example the word super all right and we have every word that 
has the word super in it. So if I start typing market, okay, now I have supermarket, great. You're trying to figure out a word and you heard it, it was something like superfluous, 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 you're not really sure. And every time you type it in wrong, it is not auto-corrected and the computer has no idea what you're trying to spell based on what you're typing in. Even Google doesn't know what you're talking about and you want a better way. So you can type in super and you know that it was something like su superfluous. So we go flu, so I super Super, okay, that looks pretty promising down there. So, fluous, aha. Oh, you know what? And I actually want to use superfluously, yes. And so, since I want to use superfluously, I'll just go ahead and take it. And it's like, great, well, where is it? Well, the way I made this work is that it's on my clipboard and it's on the system clipboard, so you can go paste it wherever you need to. And so that's really nice. We can try this with another one. So let's just, I'm just coming up with something here. Words that have woman in it. Okay, so there's a lot of words that have woman in it. Chair woman, butt woman, butter woman, bumbo woman, okay. Bird woman, so uh, you know, looks like aircraft woman. Okay, well, you know, was there something having to do with like you know, there's a sportsman of the year, is there a sportswoman of the year? Well, let's see. Oh, yep, and there's even sportswomanly and sportswomanship. So great, now you have that, and there you go, and you can it's on your clipboard, you're good to go. So you get the idea if you know part of a word or maybe you're looking for a word, you want to try to figure it out. Well, you can get in part of the word and try to sound it out, or you can put in part of a word and see what you can get out of it. So you might want to be able to add some sort of prefix to it or suffix to it. and You're really not sure how to do that. And so, for instance, you might have mm, the word light. Okay, and you want to say unlight? Oh, okay, good, there is an unlight, okay. And so, anyway, as long as the word or your search text is in the word, then you can put in any other part and try to figure out what you want here. So, you know, it has light in it. So now you have all these words that have light in it. Everything from undelighted to sunlight to you name it. So pretty useful. So now, how am I doing this? All right. So what I'm doing is I'm using rip grip and I'm passing in the query, which was the partial word that we wanted. And then I'm searching through the user share dict words here on my Mac. This is on other Unix distributions. And so you should be able to find that. And then I'm piping it over to FCF so I get the list and we can search through it by typing in partial parts of the word. And then I'm piping it to PB copy so that it goes on our system clipboard. And so again, sky's the limit with these things. You have RC to find crates that are out in the wild on crates.io. And you can use GHI to pull down a GitHub issue list, and then once you do, open it out on the web.
And all of this is using the power of FCF and then just really, really simple little Zish functions. And all of these Zish functions are available on the What's That Smell GitHub repo. I thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and come back soon because there will be more content. And I look forward to your comments. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day.